Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I was lost, but now I am found. Wait, I was lost? Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Kennedy Alexander Robertson, aka Kenny. And apparently, I almost caused an international crisis. Apparently, I was missing, and I didn't know it. I thought I was found, but apparently I was missing. I was not missing, okay? My best friend and quite a few other people knew exactly where I was. I've been in communication with quite a few people. Uh, but what happened? That's what you really wanna know. I know you wanna know what happened. So what happened? Okay, uh, I went to Germany to just relax and just chill out, you know, to start my year. Before I boarded the plane, my mom called me and she was like, hey, Kenny, where are you? And I was like, hey, mom, in Charlotte, I'm gonna be gone for a few days. Cause, you know, that's how guys do. They answer the question that you ask them, all right? Uh, what I should have said was, hey, mom, I'm in Charlotte, but I'm about to get on a plane to go to Germany and I'll be gone for a week. But that's not what I did. Once I got to Germany, I turned my phone off because I have an international plan, however, once I read over the details of my international plan, I was like, I don't feel like paying for that. While I'm over here, I'm not gonna use my phone. So I put my phone in airplane mode. I had my phone in airplane mode uh, for the majority of my trip. Uh, from time to time, I did have the Wi-Fi, and that's how I was able to communicate with people that had an iPhone. My mom didn't have an iPhone, so I wasn't able to communicate with her. She was calling and texting. I ain't see it, because she ain't on an iPhone. Same thing with my dad, calling and texting. I don't see the iPhone. But I was safe. I was good the whole time. I was with some uh, friends over in Germany, so we were good. Um, I didn't know there was a problem until I got back into Chicago. When I landed in Chicago, I turned my phone on and man, like I'm, my phone's blowing up. Like I'm talking old coworkers, old supervisors and bosses, uh, ex girlfriends, people I haven't talked to since high school. Like everybody's hitting me up, and my homeboy, uh, I hit him up. Uh, you know, he he called and he was like, hey, man, I just talk to your mom. You know, she's worried. She's concerned. Like, just give her a call. Let her know you're all right. So I give her a call. I was like, hey, mom, I'm good. I'm in Chicago. My bad. I had my phone off. And she's like, oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you're safe. I wish I'd have known that before I would hoopla. And I'm like, what hoopla? And that's when she let me know that she made a Facebook post. See, you already know, like, once this thing hits social media, this any any news like this, somebody's missing... This thing's about to blow up. I'm thankful that, you know, I got a mom that care enough to, if she thought I was missing for real, that she put me out there. So anyway, she puts it out there that I'm missing. Some of you are wondering like, okay, well that's your mom, but who's Michelle Perry? Uh, Michelle Perry is a high school classmate of mine. And shout out to Michelle for making that uh, for making that post. Cause apparently when you, when you did it, that joint went like, boom. And so apparently you got the juice on Facebook. So. Michelle, next time I got a uh, a show, uh, next time I'm doing an investment seminar, I'm helping, I'm trying to get people to make sure that they, they, you know, properly protected with life insurance. Whatever it is I'm doing, Michelle, you on the team and you need to let people know because apparently you got the juice. Shell, you got the juice. Yeah, I'm gonna call you Shell now because you, you part of the family. Now, Shell, you got the juice. I need you to let people know what Kenny got going on because when you say it, they listen. I say it. I don't, I don't know. When you say it, you they listen. So I need you to. I need you on the team, Shell. And I know a lot of y'all are thinking, man, that's cool that you, you know, you, your home is no and some other friends know. But how you not tell your mama? She ain't got no iPhone, y'all. That's a, whatever, whatever, whatever. I got it. I will send her an email next time. When I land in Charlotte, I don't know how big this thing is yet. You know, I already talked to my parents. You know, they're cool, but. You know, I'm starting to see, I'm getting more text messages. So I'll say, before this thing gets any bigger, let me go live so people can see my face. They can see this is like happening right now in the present. Like this ain't no video that somebody is forcing me to do or nothing. Like I'm doing this right here in the airport so they can see me. So I go live and I'm kind of like upbeat, kind of like trying to downplay it because I don't know how big it is. So I made my video, let people know I was safe. That was good and I was never missed. The next day when I wake up, I found this thing is a whole lot bigger 
then uh then I then I knew like I'm reading through people's text messages, listening to voicemails. I can hear all the emotion in their voices and reading through their text. I'm like, oh snap, like really people like really thought I was missing and some people like maybe thought like the worst. So I was like, oh my god, like I'm so sorry. Like once I really heard everybody's voice, I felt so bad for, you know, being having put people in that emotional state. And so, you know, I definitely wanna apologize. Like, man, I felt so bad uh for that, you know, but I I'm very appreciative that people care. So thank y'all, you know, for everybody that cared and, you know, expressed themselves the way that they did and in the search for me. I appreciate all the calls, the texts, you know, all the prayers, everything everybody did to try to find me. I think the most impressive thing though somebody did was they looked up my property taxes to find out what kind of vehicle I drove. I thought I was dope. You on the team too. CSI, SVU, FBI, CIA, you find me. I, listen, listen, you on the team. Because if I need some information, I know you're going to do what you got to do to go get it. So you on the team too. What did I learn? Let your mom and them know where you're at. Or at least when you leave and when you arrive. You know, so that they know that you're good. I learned that. Not that I didn't know it before, but I got it now. I also learned that when people find out that you safe after you really wasn't missing now they won't kill you i don't know how that worked but that's what i've learned once they find out that you're safe they won't kill you now and uh because i got a lot of death threats i learned that people you know <laughs> sweet on old kenny ken you feel me you know man y'all got a little love for you boy so i appreciate that you know i appreciate the love and all of that that felt real good not that i ever questioned it but if i didn't know before i definitely know now since i've been back i've seen people cry but once you know they they were happy to see my face. I've been uh, punched. I've been uh, fussed at. I've been kicked. I've been cussed out. Um, I've been slapped repeatedly. Uh, I got hemmed up by the police in public at a basketball game. And nobody said anything. Ain't nobody pull out no cameras, no phones. All I'm saying, where's the justice for me? You know, Dr. King would, would not be, be, be happy with y'all. That y'all didn't. Y'all saw them police officers. They hit me up. And I don't know if y'all know, but police officers got that that grown man forearm strength. I don't know what y'all doing in the academy to get that grown man forearm strength, but they got it. And I was up on the wall and ain't nobody do nothing. I was walking to uh to my seat and I could hear people like whispering like like little kids and stuff. Like, mama, ain't that the man that missing mama? Mama, they go right there, mama. He right there, mama. He he walking, he sitting, going to the announcer table, mama. Little, that man that missing right now. On a serious note, a lot of times, uh, a lot of people go missing like every day. And a lot of times those people don't come back. And I don't want anybody to think that I'm taking this uh, situation with myself like lightly. Um, because I know there are so many people that have gone missing and haven't come back. And, uh, you know, we, we miss those people uh, dearly and we're praying for their families. This whole ordeal has made me think that man, we don't really have time to be you know, arguing with each other and fussing and fighting and like like hating people and, and not talking to people like I don't understand that I, I, I really don't especially after everything that's going on with me I just want to encourage us to you know make sure that we're looking out for one another that we're loving each other you if somebody's on your mind if you're thinking about them like reach out to them call them text them say hey just, you know, we just got to look out for each other. Like, give people their flowers, like, while they're alive. Like, don't wait till you get bad news or tragedy. You know, I know we can get tied up in our own little world, but, like, let's stop living like that. Like, let's learn how to live together. Like, let's be intentional about that. We need each other, and life is so fragile, y'all. Life is so fragile. So let's do the best uh, that we can with the time that we can have. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Y'all go out there and be great. Peace.